All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we are looking at two of Unify's new NASes. And right here, this is the Unify UNAS Pro 8. And this is a NAS I really wanted to not like. There's a couple of parts about it with this CPU that is somewhat limited in terms of your overall ability to saturate a full 10 gigabit transfer over SMB. And so I really wanted to not like it. However, this price that it's coming in at makes it so hard to give it a bad review. This unit is $800, and it has an optional redundant power supply, NVMe caching, two SFP Plus ports, and a 10 gigabit RJ45 port with eight drives. Those specs for only $800 US make this an incredible value proposition, and it is hard to give it a bad review because of this. It is essentially just a beefed up UNAS Pro, and really aimed at kind of the companies who need stuff like redundant power supplies and all of those features, but aren't spending all of their day like video editors are dumping terabytes and terabytes of footages into this thing. And at that space, it excels phenomenally well. The interface is really easy to use as Unify always has, and the price point that it comes in at is just phenomenal. I also have right here a fascinating NAS from them, which is their new Tubey that is actually PoE powered. You open it up by just pulling out the bottom bays right here. And there are your little drive trays. And it is entirely PoE powered, which is absolutely fascinating. We're not gonna be talking about this too much, but it is coming in at 200 US dollars, which is also a phenomenal value for a Tubey NAS. And we're mostly going to be talking about this thing right here, which I've been playing with for quite a while now. And with the price point that it comes in at, I've got to say it's a recommendation if you're somebody who needs this kind of box and does not need some of the other features like Docker or other things like that that comes with Synology and all the other NAS brands. All right, so before we get into this, quick disclaimers. So Unify did send this to me for free, and I have Unify affiliate links, but this is not sponsored by them. They don't control what I'm saying in this video. And this video does actually have a sponsor, our web developer, Matt. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, our web developer, Visagio & Co. If you remember about a year ago, SpaceRex went through a massive rebrand. We got new logos, new website, and we spun off the Yarbrough Technologies as the consulting arm. This was all done through Matt and his team. We met with them often to go over what we thought would be best, and they really helped us build an entire business plan and really think through the pros and cons to every single one of our decisions, all while also building us out logos, new colors, new fonts, and an entire website. I cannot recommend them enough, and I think their work absolutely speaks for itself. So if you're ready to take your business to the next level, check out Visaggio & Co. in the link in the description. They have web development packages starting from just getting started all the way up into high-end projects, marketing, and entire rebranding. So check out Visaggio & Co. in the link in the description, and thanks for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so this right here is the UNAS Pro 8. It is a 8-bay NAS, as you can tell from up front, and it actually has the same CPU as the UNAS Pro, which was the 7-bay model, just clocked at a higher rate, and it does reach better throughputs. It also comes with a few really nice additions versus the UNAS Pro, namely the redundant power supplies in the back, the extra bay, so we go from 7 bays to 8 bays, which is very nice, but it does bring all of your ports to the back. And it also has two SFP Plus ports and now an 10 gigabit RJ45 port and the addition of two M.2 NVMe SSD caching slots. This unit is built phenomenally well, especially for the price point. As you can see, all metal design and everything is nice and hot swappable. This uses their power supplies, really easy to get in and out and these fans are really, really, really quiet. Overall, the NASP, you don't really hear much at all especially if you compare this to a rack mount dual power supply design, these things are nearly silent. The SSDs are removed with this little tool right here, and they come in and out very easily once you understand how it is. They do come in this little proprietary tray, though I do understand that I believe you can swap and put your own NVMe drives in there, but you do not get this tray with your purchase of the NAS, so you would have to either just buy these, stick them in, 
or go ahead and get the tray and put whatever drives you want in there. But it is all really easy to swap in and out, all without undoing a single screw, which is really nice. If you've seen the UNAS Pro, it has the exact same drive trays up front, really easy to get in and out if you're using three and a half inch drives, which is what you're gonna use in a unit like this. As I said, the CPU is a little lackluster, and so because of that, you're not gonna be using this unit as a crazy fast NFS VM store, because honestly, you're not going to be able to get those really fast speeds with this CPU. And I'm sure down the line, Unify will be adding to their lineup a device more catered towards that. But for this, you get a big storage chassis that you can store eight hard drives in with SSD caching for 800 bucks, while also being rack mountable and having the option for dual power supplies. So it comes with one power supply built in and just a cover over the second power supply option which is great, even if you're not somebody who needs redundant power supplies. It is nice having just hot swappable power supplies, so if it does go bad, it's really easy to swap out and purchase rather than having to RMA the whole unit or anything like that. So that is an advantage even if you're not going that side. On the back, we have dual SFP Plus ports, which was huge. If you are looking to use this thing in an NFS kind of scenario, you really want to have a separate VLAN dedicated to NFS and storage. NFS doesn't really do its own authentication well. You don't really trust it on an open network. And so what you do is you essentially have a storage only network that isn't routed and everything it addresses through that. So this is great. What you do is you basically have one of those SFP plus ports set up for that NFS only network and the other one just on the regular storage VLAN. And that way you can use both of them very easily. Then for people who are using RJ45, there's also a 10 gigabit RJ45 port on there. So overall, a very nice package and really hitting all the nice stats with all of this thing. All right, so before we power this thing up and check it out, do really want to quickly mention this little two bay guy that's also going to be coming out. It's 200 bucks. It is PoE++ powered, which I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not sure why you would want a PoE powered NAS, but I love that it exists. For people who are in the Unify ecosystem, already have PoE++ stuff all over the place, having to just have one power supply for this thing, I guess is nice, but it does have the downside of, oh hey, if your switch goes out, your NAS has a hard shutdown, which isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. It's fine for things like security cameras and Wi-Fi access points, but you tend to want to put NASs on UPSs and I guess you can always get the PoE++ adapter and stick that on a UPS, but really this is set up for people who just need a small amount of storage space. And maybe this makes a great backup target and being able to just really easily back up a NAS and not have to worry about running cables and stuff like that. So if you are already in that ecosystem, it can be a solid buy. And once again, it's 200 bucks. So it's really hard to complain too much about it because of that value proposition. Really? That's where Unify is coming at. Having these things at the phenomenal price point that is undercutting their entire competition while having really nice interface is the reason why even though these systems are underpowered compared to other NAS operating systems and NAS offerings, I still have to give them a great review for the people who are looking for these systems because you cannot buy anything Synology makes rack mounted for 800 bucks anywhere close to the specs this thing has. And so they're fighting at a different weight class, and I assume they are then going to push upward once they get that market, which is a really great place for them to be. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and set this thing on up and check it on out. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back on in. We'll just grab my laptop out and check it on out. All right, so I've gone ahead, powered this thing on in, and just pulled out my laptop. And right here, I'm currently running 4.4.2 as the OS and application 3.2.6. And we're gonna go ahead and first just build out our storage pool. You can see that I have been using this thing for testing, so we're gonna go have to head and format some of these drives and add them back on in. And we'll go ahead and go just with a RAID 5, though normally for a setup like this, I'd go with RAID 6. You can also see right here, there is an optional RAID group, which starts making a lot more sense when you've got these eight bay units. So you can start adding in basically a RAID 5 group of four drives and a RAID 5 group of another four drives of a different size, adding them together and having them as one big storage space. But here, we're just gonna go ahead and have a RAID 5. So it's currently going through and formatting that storage pool. 
it's right next to me. I cannot hear it at all. The thing is dead silent, especially considering how these are hot swappable fans. The Synology versions of your hot swap redundant power supply fans are very loud. This does not have any noise associated with it. I cannot hear it and it's maybe three or four feet away from me, which is great for those environments where that is important. If anything, the sound of the drives is going to be the only thing you can hear. And really that's gonna be drive dependent. So now we can also see at the bottom here, we've got these two NVMe drives. And we're gonna go ahead and use those for the new feature that is available here. And that is SSD caching. We'll set up as a read write cache and we will use both of the drives right here. And it'll automatically set up as a RAID 1. And so what that does is it essentially offloads random writes to the actual SSDs as well as some random reads. So that way your hard drives are not having to do as many things. So if you've got tons of people at the exact same time saving files to the NAS and it starts getting overloaded, it'll be able to offload those writes to these NVMe drives and that way it's able to then pull those off and choose to basically do those writes at a later time when not so much stuff is going on. A write cache is really useful for kind of office-y workflows where you're having these massive periods of a bunch of people doing stuff that don't last that long and then you have downtime where you can kind of bring everything back into long-term storage. So really that's the kind of market share this is going for and I think it will work quite usefully. Now right now, this storage pool too does have to go through and do its RAID sync. And so we will be having diminished performance during this time. And so we're gonna talk about numbers. We're gonna talk about previous numbers I've run rather than right here, just because this thing has to sync. And that means the disks are doing a bunch of things, which will be slowing it down, but we can still test out a lot of the features and everything like that. But just know right now, while it is doing the storage pool sync, you will be getting less performance because the drives are busy making sure that all the RAID 5 is spread across the entire 50 terabytes of available space. We can also pop into our SSDs and we will see our read and write hit rates. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some data out here and we can start to look at these numbers and this is where you can see how useful the caching is. I'm gonna go ahead and just go in and create a new drive. and I've already created an SMB user on this thing. So now let's go ahead and mount it. I'm over 10 gig. And so we can go ahead and get some figures for how fast this thing is. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just show you those quick write tests. And there's nothing too interesting here because this is a lot slower than I originally saw it to be. Right now, due to the fact that we are doing that build, we can see we're hitting fairly slow numbers. This is even worse than it was when I tested a minute ago. But basically, while this RAID sync is going, we are getting severely diminished performance. We're hovering maybe around 500, and it's just going all over the place. In reality, I was getting numbers around 800 megabytes per second with large file copies with macOS. Now, macOS is kind of the worst case scenario for SMB NASs it does not seem to do as efficiently as Windows boxes do. And so you will definitely see better performance out of Windows clients, as well as having multiple streams. But it is going to be CPU limited compared to the theoretical 1.1 gigabytes per second that is possible. You're not leaving a ton of performance on the table, especially if you've got multiple clients because the performance aggregates out and it does a lot better. But you definitely are not going to be able to saturate that full 1.1 to 1.2 gigabytes per second that I can out of my own custom built editing NAS. So that is going to be a downside. So I can go ahead and dump the same file to my desktop. And you can see effortlessly from my custom built true NAS rig, being able to saturate that full connection. So we know macOS can do it here, and we just know there is that limitation with this CPU. But with that all being said, for the places that are looking to deploy these things and the kind of price point and target audience they're going for, I don't think that limitation for single client transfer speeds is going to be too significant for people, but it's really just what are you looking for it to do? We also have a nice updated dashboard right here where we can see all of our different ports here and we can start to see our caching performance by coming back in 
and seeing our storage over here. So I don't have any read rates yet. Once again, this is a very new pool, but our write rates are at 98%, and that is the theoretical offloading there. We can also come back here and we can actually change our fan mode, which is a new addition here. So you can see right here, the CPU utilization. And also right now, we're not doing anything to it. And it's hovering around 30, 40% CPU utilization. That is because we are actively syncing those disks. And that is the part of this that's all going to be limited by that performance. But we can come right here, kick that thing up and see if we can even hear it. I'm not sure if you catch this on camera. When you turn on high, oh, you can hear it. And we'll turn it back down to balance. And it is slowly going back down to its regular speeds. It kicks up very quickly, and I guess it has a fan curve in there to drop the fan speeds to a lower level, but it does take a little while. We can also see that we do have those different ports we can use and you are able to completely independently include them. So you can put this on three separate LANs and do all of that very easily, which is great. But that's pretty much it. This unit comes in at a phenomenal price point. And because of that, it's a great recommendation for people who are looking for this kind of thing and don't need crazy performance. This is not the unit you're going to buy all SSDs in and have a crazy fast video editing file server. That is just not this market. This unit is great for people who need bulk storage, especially for like office deployments, who really just need a traditional office file server and are already living in that unified ecosystem. It plugs into identity very nicely, though you do still have to make those SMB credentials, which can be a bit of a nuisance. But that integration and that really easy deployment, coupled with a unbeatable price point, makes this an absolute recommendation for the people who are looking for it. And going forward, I think we're only going to be seeing some more performant units out of these things. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.